we want to combine both because we're Chinese Canadians and we want to have that fusion and that kind of that mixture um, for that. But there is differences in mm-hmm. terms of, um, you know, when you hear those Chinese instruments, mm-hmm. uh, then it's a distinct sound mm-hmm. the instruments. It's, it's different because then, you, you know, sometimes you see just, you know, like traditional Chinese music and then there's Western pop, you know, that we hear on the radio and um, very common. So then, but we want to, Nesh to both <laughs> to make a like a fresh sound. It's awesome. So then uh, we can bring out our authentic selves. Nice. So that we can keep embracing our authentic selves and to encourage and empower people to do the same. Le- growing up from a household as well, like things are, we have tr- a lot of traditional values and traditional beliefs um, that we are, uh, you know, grow up from. And so we want to use our messages in our music and also in our, um, in the sound as well to kind of convey the message that. Um, you can go outside of recovery zone. You don't have to, you know, forget about all your traditional values or traditional beliefs, but you can also, you know, um, modernize it or make it embrace and make it something into your own that's authentic to who you are. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Flourish Podcast. And today we have a couple of amazing guests with us and I'm really, really excited to talk with them, not just about flourishing, but of course about how they're flourishing and maybe there's some incredible learnings from their story that will help and support you too. So today I'm really pumped because we have the Icon Twins and we're gonna tell you a little bit about that name, but they are an award-winning Chinese-Canadian singer-songwriter duo. That sounds amazing. And of course, the duo consists of Calvina Poon and Carmina Poon. So, uh, Calgary, Alberta. So, you guys are, you ladies are twins. Yes. And uh, are you going to tell us which is which, or are we going to have to guess? <laughs> yeah, so we'll make it easier this time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I'm Calvina. Yeah. I'm Carmina. And we are Icon Twins. Oh, I love that. Yep. Absolutely. So, let me finish uh, the bio and then we're going to get into it. But they perform actually these, the Icon Twins, in English, Cantonese, and Mandarin, which is amazing because I can't even perform in one language, let alone in three. So these ladies, I got to hand it to them. But Icon Twins stands for I Am Confident. I love that. And honestly, I know these ladies uh, fairly well, I think. And they really have exemplified a desire to spread the message that as long as we have confidence in ourselves, we can achieve anything. So they've performed internationally in Canada, Hong Kong, and Macau, uh, China, and the United States including at MGM Resorts and competed at The Voice of China in Hong Kong. They write neo-Chinese conscious pop music. So that's awesome. I can't wait to hear exactly what that is. And and then it's, um, uh, what is that word there? You're going to help me out. Oh, Feng. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm thinking you can probably say it better than me. But that's uh, Zhong Gua Feng music that's perfect. That's perfect. with conscious lyrics to empower listeners to embrace. I love this, their authentic selves. Through music, they're embracing the Chinese Canadians' bicultural identities, which is awesome. Their aim is to bridge the Eastern and Western culture with their music by combining traditional Chinese instruments with contemporary pop to create a fresh sound. And so they self-released their debut single in 2020. And so now they've continued to write new music. In November 2023, they released their new single called the... Here we go. I love that. From their neo-Chinese conscious pop debut mini album, their forthcoming mini album will be released in 2024. So welcome. Thank you. Yeah, I'm so grateful to have you both here. Yes, we're very excited. Absolutely. So, I mean, uh, I, I don't think you've always been... I mean, you've probably always been musical, but you haven't always been professional musicians. So tell us about like your background and what brought you here and kind of how it all kind of came together for you. Yeah, so we are Chinese Canadians, like um, how um, Ip introduced us to us. So we, being brought up in the Asian household, we always, you know, like we always been conditioned to believe that, you know, having a successful life, having a fulfilled life, um, it takes to be, it, we have to be in like steady corporate yes. world. Yes. And so that's exactly a Secure what we job. Yeah. Very good education. Yeah, so that's exactly what we did after we graduated from University of Calgary. And uh, so we got to banking, Mm -hmm. both of us. Okay. (laughs) And uh, and then (laughs) so we, you know, we did the corporate, we climbed the corporate ladder. We uh, worked really hard. um, And then we were grateful to have all those experiences and skills that we developed in banking. And uh, we met a lot of our goals there as well. But then, and at a certain point, we thought that we're going to be fulfilled and and feel very successful. But when we got there, we didn't uh we felt you know lost and then 
stuck and unfulfilled. Mm. And we didn't understand why at first. So then we just went on a self-awareness journey um, and we did some self-reflection. And uh, we realized that um, something was missing. And what's missing is our passion, which was music. Okay. Uh, so, hmm. so then we took a leap, you know, flew across the globe. Yeah. Uh, we resigned from our banking careers in Calgary, flew across the globe and um, to Hong Kong to pursue our music from scratch. Wow. And so now we're singer songwriters, uh, we're performing, we're writing our own music, and now we're releasing our music. That's awesome. That's awesome, eh? That took a lot of courage. Thank you. Hey, and uh, <clears throat> a couple of things about that. I mean, how did your parents respond to that? You know, just uh, like you said, had a, a bit of a traditional upbringing and maybe some expectations, not in a negative way, but just probably all parents have hopes yeah. and dreams for their kids. And how how was that for your folks? Yeah, so when we were about to, you know, tell them about the news, when we made the decision we wanted to tell them, yeah. um, we were quite nervous because, yeah. like you said, uh, we didn't know how they would react. Yeah. Um but actually, the the reaction was actually a lot more positive. Than oh, okay. We yeah. So wow. We awesome. told her mom, and then her mom was actually very encouraging. She was like, "Yeah, go do it." You're right. Um. And so she she was like, "Yeah, yeah. If you if that's what you want to do, go do it." And then my dad, uh, he's usually a bit more introverted, and he <laughs> he's more, <laughs> he like think about it more. So he like kind of paused, and so he asked us a couple questions, and he said, "Um, are you sure? And uh, why are you doing it? Mm-hmm. And uh, are." Like, are you sure? And we're like, yeah, we won't really want to try. But he said, the main thing that really stuck with us is like, don't try. If you're going to do this, um, then put in your all. And don't don't try, but put in your all. And so that you can succeed and do your best. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. And uh, are you the only children of your parents? We are. Yeah. Uh, okay. Very cool. Eh? That's right. <laughs> well, she got she got two for one, so, yeah. so to speak, I, I guess. But... Uh, and so how's it been for you? Like, I mean, going from banking into music and now really launching out in a career, it's a competitive environment. There's so much pressure on musicians today, but how have you found it? Well, the journey has been, you know, it's a journey. Uh, it's, um, you know, I can't say it's always been smooth and easy, like an, any journey that we embark on. So it's been up and down, yeah. you know, and then, uh, but we're grateful that um, we got opportunities that really helped us grow yeah. um, as a, um, you know, personally, at a personal level, as well as as a musician and a performer. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, starting from banking, our, you know, our background, we didn't come from music. Yeah. So that's why we really had to do a lot of things out of our comfort zones. Yeah. Um, and to, to do things that we've never done before and yeah. to build experience. So, for instance, we've start, competed in a lot of different competitions. When we started. Okay, well. Uh, and then, uh, so then, you know, we started with smaller competitions and yeah. then, you know, we progressed yeah. as we got more comfortable and then we got bigger big competitions like and then we were grateful to be able to participate in the voice of china hong kong wow and that was an intense competition but um we gained a lot of experiences from there and then also um and another way to increase uh, the network in the mm-hmm. industry as well their knowledge as well yeah so um yeah i mean so we're grateful for those opportunities but we believe that because we took the first step to to make that change and to uh really uh, take do things out of our comfort zones to live our authentic life and authentic self is what kind of helped us to build a confidence to keep going. That's awesome. And so um, I would imagine like, it's interesting because going from banking to music, uh, interesting, you know, I have a friend who is, uh, manages several banks and uh, she was telling me just a little while ago, like she has almost no autonomy. Like, you know, every decision is prescripted. There is a process of procedure, understandably, right? It's not a place where creativity is encouraged, right? If you're in a bank, it's not like they're like, just be creative about this, you know, because obviously it's regulated and uh, expectations. And then you go from that to music and art and creativity. So that took a lot of courage. So where where did the courage come from? Um, I think when that time, when I remembering, like when I was in banking and I our, like and we were hitting our goals and things like that. Um, and when we felt very lost and and stuck, yeah. I think at that point I just felt when we did some self reflection, we realized that it was a music dream okay. that we were um, lacking in our lives. Mm-hmm. And just I think at that point I didn't even think it was courage, honestly. Right. <laughs> I, right. I just thought that because life is short and I'm not happy right now. So if I continue to live my life as is without any changes or any growth, mm-hmm. then it's I'm going to continue to be unhappy probably um but so with that mindset i think that we i just wanted to take a leap we just want to take the i'm not having any regrets in life 
Yeah. So that I think that was the mindset we had. Yep. And then so we took a leap, went to Hong Kong, and then started everything from scratch. Mm-hmm. And um, that was exciting. Also nerve-wracking at yeah. the point, as yeah. such. Yeah. But uh, it was a journey, and I'm so grateful that we took that leap and made that decision. Okay. That was the decision that we made for ourselves yeah. without um, you know, listening to external noises or our um, societal expectations. Okay. Yeah. And be, I think being in banking, having that banking experience really helped us mm-hmm. um, with the music side of, like the music business side. Like, okay. Okay. Uh, your networking, mm-hmm. your building relationships. Yeah. You know, yeah. Servicing and all the other things. Yeah. So uh, we're grateful for having those experiences. Cool. Um, and, um, you know, and then you know, being creative in the banking world, it's different, different creativity yeah. of what being music is. Yes. Of course. Yeah. Uh, being creative in the banking world is basically being creative in problem solving. Right. There's some creativity involved. Yeah. But then, like you said, Abe, uh, there's like guidelines and yes. conditions <laughs> and clients right. that we got to adhere to. So, oh, it's right. so that's it's different. Right on. So tell us a bit about, I mean, I read the description, but tell us about Neo-Chinese conscious pop music. Yeah. So Neo-Chinese conscious pop is, um, we wanted to have a something that reflects who we are and mm-hmm. as a growth of a, as an artist. Mm-hmm. So chi- I, again, we're Chinese Canadian. So we wanted to, our aim and purpose is to connect the Eastern and Western cultures awesome. through our music. And so Neo-Chinese conscious pop is basically using um, a lot of our traditional Chinese instruments mm-hmm. and then we combine it with contemporary pop. So nice. when you listen to your music, you're going to hear a lot of uh, uh, instrument, Chinese instruments like the guzhong, the uh, airfu, the uh, dizi, and we want to use that to put it with uh, contemporary pop. And uh, so pop will have like heavy drum beats and also like orchestral sound as well, like uh, with violin, a lot, we love strings, so we added that in there. Nice. Um, and then we worked with a really good producer, uh, a Juno Award uh, winning uh, producer, so that he was able to bring our vision to life. So we were very That's awesome. Yeah, and I know that a lot of your music, I mean, I, I love the fact that it, it focuses on confidence and authenticity and finding yourself. And how do you, you know, obviously, my reference point, obviously, is Western culture for, for the most part, for sure. Um, how do you find that fusion of that kind of messaging with sort of Eastern culture and Western? Is it essentially the same in both cultures? Or do you find that you uh, I wouldn't say adapt it, but that you're just modifying it a little bit culturally. How does that kind of look? In terms of culture-wise, um, it's definitely there's differences. Mm-hmm. Um, um, that's why we use. We want to combine both because we're Chinese Canadians and we want to have that fusion and that kind of that mixture mm-hmm. um, for that. But there is differences in mm-hmm. terms of, um, you know, when you hear those Chinese instruments, mm-hmm. uh, then it's this distinct sound mm-hmm. in instruments. It's, it's different mm-hmm. from, like, say, violin or Western instruments mm-hmm. uh, or, or orchestral instruments but that's what we want to combine and make a f- new sound nice because then you, you know sometimes you see just you know like traditional chinese music and then there's western pop you know that we hear on the radio and um very common so then but we want to mesh to both <laughs> to make a like a fresh sound it's awesome so then uh, we can bring out our authentic selves nice so that we can keep embracing our authentic selves and to encourage and empower people to do the same mm-hmm. um and that's what our lyrics, like our English is all English. So English lyrics, it's about okay. like empowering people to live authentically. Yeah. yeah. And so uh, musically, I get that. How, how about the message itself? Like, do you find the message itself translates pretty well uh, in both cultures, you know, of authenticity and being confident and things like that? Um, yeah, because I think um, in terms of self-confidence, I think when you want to build self-confidence, it takes... Um, it, it's not. It's a journey. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's not like overnight that you can build your self confidence. Um, so for us, uh, when we first started, uh, we think that taking action is a very um, essential in, in order to building your confidence. Because when you take action, then you're gonna see uh, through the process and through learning and through mistakes that you learn from and lessons that you learn, then you're gonna grow. And the, the more you grow, the more you do, the more result you have, then the more confidence you're gonna have with, uh, within yourself. And in terms of the culture, I think that's um, also. I think it's. Um, the, the same um, for Asian cultures, I guess, because um, even like when we were living in Hong Kong too, we know that like sometimes um, li- growing up from a household as well, like things are, we have tr- a lot of traditional values and traditional beliefs um, that we are, uh, you know, grow up from. And so we want to use our messages in our music and also in our, um, in the sound as well to kind of convey the message that um, you can go outside of recovery zone. You don't have to, you know, mm-hmm. Forget of all your traditional values or traditional beliefs, but you can also, you know, um, modernize it or make it embrace it and make it something into your own that's authentic to who you are. Mm-hmm. So that's, uh, I think that would 
be, I think the, the message essentially is more universal in terms of self building self-confidence and building um, your self-awareness. That's awesome. I love that. And so what have been, because uh, you mentioned you've, you've accomplished a lot, what would be some of the uh, greatest wins or accomplishments so far for you? To, to be honest, um, you know, we're blessed to have a lot of different achievements throughout the journey. Mm. Um, but I think one main thing that really helped us to feel accomplished and fulfilled mm -hmm. is just taking that first step and giving up our comfort zone, mm -hmm. um, moving out of our comfort zones, like say banking mm -hmm. or, um, you know, I guess a little bit of a traditional values of the norm mm -hmm. and uh, breaking out of the corporate world. That's it's huge, right? Taking that step and mm -hmm. bringing out comfort zone too. Step into our passion and authentic self, which is music, uh, uncertain. Sometimes could be uncertain. Um, music. Yeah. Yeah, and because we took that step, that's yeah. why we've had those different milestones and wins along the way, like yeah. having those opportunities. Because I think when you take the first step, that you can attract the opportunities and the things that you're um, looking for to to grow yourself into your life. Yeah. Yeah, and then right now by doing that, I think it's a great achievement because also in mental health, mm -hmm. it's um, a lot positive yep. or positive like sometimes you know it goes up and, up and down depending you know what we experience in our journey mm -hmm. but um because we're doing what we're passionate about and everything that we do it's fulfilling yeah so that's why <laughs> even though you know sometimes our mental health it's not like there yeah it could be here yep. then um it's i guess uh important or easier i guess to get back up to where we want it to be or where it's so it's to keep it positive mm -hmm. and have a positive mindset. Yeah. 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 And I know that a lot of your music does, um, and we'll share some of the, where people can find your music in a, in a few minutes, because I, I think it's worth it for people, but you do have a lot of focus on mental health. And so you, your twins, uh, your sisters, you're in music together, you're in business together. So how do you, how do you navigate your relationship? Um, yeah. So, well, we're well, always been really close, yeah. but, uh, uh, since embarking into this uh, journey in music and uh, doing it, like kind of like building like our dream and our and business together, we've encountered even more like challenges together, and uh, where our relationship has been closer. Mm -hmm. um, however, sometimes during the downfall, <laughs> because we're <laughs> twins, so that we do influence each other quite a bit. So we'll, and then sometimes we'll like you, when we go down, it's it times too. Right, right. <laughs> but then we don't try not to stay there too long. Awesome. So then one of us will you know pump each other back up, and we'll we'll um, influence each other to get back up to our um, positive and more. Uh, it's like go getter. <laughs> right on. <laughs> That's all you can do sometimes. Right? Yeah, yeah. It, yeah, that's why it's great to have people around you yeah. that are like-minded you... around you. Yeah, so, I mean, generally speaking, because your, your message is, like, you know, around confidence and authenticity and, and a lot of mental health. Like, how do you describe or see the challenges that, like, sort of our generation's facing right now? What are you, what are you noticing when you kind of look out there and see what you see? Um, I see that um, cause as we grow older, uh, as we continue to grow, um, if we continue to get stuck um, or be in that comfort state, because then uh, we, were, we love to read, and uh, we're reading this book recently. It's called The Power of Discipline. Mm -hmm. um, and then in there it says that um, there's something called, it's in the book it's mentioned something called status quo bias. Mm -hmm. So in there I learned, like, it, I think it's very, I agree, really agree with it because um, it's inside, like, why do we always stay in status quo? And why do mm. people just stay in status quo and be in that comfort state? Because it's comfortable. Yeah. Because first of all, it's comfortable. And then we always get, you know, adhere, like, go back to what we're comfortable with. Sure, and sure. So I think really have to, to, to kind of overcome that status, status quo bias, according to the book, is that we really have to just make a change mm -hmm. and take the first step to break out of that comfort state or comfort zone, especially if that comfort zone is not really making you happy or fulfilled. Right. But as we grow older, as the longer we stay in that comfort state or comfort zone, then harder it is to get out of it. it sure is, yep. And um and if you do things out of the comfort zone, then you just it you'll continue even though it's something new or something different, uh, when you do things out of the comfort zone, then eventually that uncomfortable thing will become comfortable. <laughs> and then and then I think being like that, then it will be, it will create more happiness and fulfillment in um, our generation. Yeah. Or it doesn't matter what age you are. Yeah. Um, and it's never too late to make that change. Yeah. And one more I want to add is that uh, I think uh, speaking uh, for myself as well and growing up in an Asian household as well, um, I think achievement is really important mm -hmm. <laughs> to us and we believe in that too. So I think one thing that uh, myself and I think a lot of um, uh, maybe Asian um, 
uh, go-getters are ambitious of people. Uh, they would uh, struggle from maybe being too hard on themselves and very critical of themselves. And that's thing that that's one thing that we kind of struggle or not struggle, but like have challenges too. And then so one thing that we do want to do is, uh, you know, um, celebrate our own wins along the way and then um, reward ourselves along the way, not just be self-critical and just keep analyzing things. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there's not a lot of value in beating up on yourself, yeah. right? But we can tend to do that quite a bit, right? So tell me, uh, how do you both uh, protect your own mental health? Like what are one or two or three sort of things for each of you that you do that just kind of keep you in a good headspace? Um, yeah, so one thing that we uh, did start doing is that we, we um, have this positive um, affirmation jar that nice. we started. Nice. So we, we like colors. So then we just kind of <laughs> got um, um, a stack of like, stickies, the like, colorful stickies, like, you know, different colors. And then we would write a uh, message to ourselves. So we would oh, get okay. it in the morning or sometimes at night, but mostly in the morning, we would just write a note to ourselves, like depending how we feel that day. So we feel like we're lacking confidence. Then we'll write a, like a message to ourselves, like I am confident. Positive affirm- yeah, proper positive affirmations for ourselves, and we'll read it out loud. Nice. Results with each other, yeah. and then we'll throw it, throw that into a jar. Yeah. We, we like to fold it into hearts. <laughs> Mind to find ourselves to love ourselves. That's awesome. So we throw it in the jar, and then now, um, because we have a jar now, so then when whenever we feel down or we need a little bit of uh, um, positivity, pick yeah, pick her up, then we'll just pick one out and read it to her. That's great. Yeah. yeah. That's great. And then another thing that we've done, we're doing is um, like meditation. Yeah. Um. Like we didn't believe, honestly, we didn't believe in meditation at first, mm-hmm. but then we're like, okay, so I'm like, you know, I sometimes have anxiety and then I stress and we think a lot. So then um, it's not, it's causing a detrimental effect on our mental health. Mm-hmm. Uh, so then we're like, okay, we're, we're going to try it. Mm-hmm. Cause then, you know, we, we see that, you know, like results in other people yeah. uh, that it works. So I'm, I'm going to, I'm just going to be open-minded and, and try it. So we did. Yeah. And then, uh, and then it, made us feel more relaxed yeah. uh, mentally and sometimes physically. Cause then when you're, when we were stressed on, we like tense our muscles. Yeah, sure. <laughs> so then, Absolutely. <laughs> and I feel like pain everywhere. Yeah. So then after yeah. like meditation, um, then we feel better. So we were, we're doing not, not long meditations, but like only 10 minutes yeah. in the morning. Yeah. That's but, uh, cause yeah, relax Absolutely. our mind and relax our bodies. Yeah. And to, so that we can, you know, start our day off. Yeah, with a yeah. relaxed and positive mind. <laughs> love that. Yeah, it's what you, Abe. Hey. Yeah, you know, um, I uh, I really love what you're saying. I mean, we tend to hold so much of our stress in our our jaw and yeah. and our neck, our shoulders. For me, I I run uh, and um, I run uh, every day, and uh, that actually really does um, me. It's sort of like stacking habits. So I meditate while I run. I pray. While I run, I process, you know, so it's sort of like a, a mental journal. Mm-hmm. But then also I, I tap into, of course, the body's um, sort of healing energy by expending energy. So those are some things. But I also meditate outside of running, and I love what you're doing with the affirmations. I'm a big, big fan of those, you know. I mean, the thing that we say to ourselves has so much power, mm-hmm. you know. So um, what do you guys have coming up? Like, so... So first off, tell us uh, about your, so your first single was released in 2020 and then you did another one just recently, right? And what are you working on? So tell us about those things. And- yeah, so we're working on our uh, debut mini album, which is a neo, uh, neo Chinese conscious pop music. Awesome. And we're working, we're, we'll be releasing it this year, working really hard. <laughs> nice. Yes. It's and, not easy, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So we are an independent artist, so we're, we're yeah. very grateful that we're on this journey. Yeah. So that's what we're working on, and then also um, along the way, we're gonna ha- we have shows and exciting things planned as well, which um, we won't uh, tell too much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big secret. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. And yeah. so, when do you expect the mini album will be released in 2024? Do you have a rough timeline? Uh, we hope. We hope. Yep. Fingers crossed. Yep. <laughs> we hope like um, you know it's summer out. Summertime. Yeah. Okay, that's awesome. And so um, you know, how was the the first single? You know, so tell us about that because I know it has a, a unique name, right? I know that. And uh, tell us about it and tell us the story behind it. Yeah. So our first debut single is called "Setting Fire." Yes. Um, and, and if you're an arsonist out there, that's not <laughs> nope. what they're saying. <laughs> no. uh, setting fire is more, um, it's more, it's, it's about, we wrote it for self, to inspire self-transformation. Yes, love that. And to um, talk it to, to um, bring out our story as well in, in terms of our self-transformation story from banking to music, mm-hmm. living our authentic selves. Mm-hmm. And setting fire is, um, we actually created 
part one and part two. Okay. So we had a vision for it. So part one, uh, we released in Hong Kong, okay. with commercial radio. Nice. And uh, part one, we want to do that because, you know, Hong Kong was the place that um, helped us to kickstart our music journey. Nice. And then part two, uh, which is more of like an upbeat version. Yeah. The first first is more melodic and more like um, more orchestral and more, um, like more closer to like more a ballad. Okay. And then so the second part two, setting fires part two is, so we call it the fir- first part is acoustic, uh-huh. setting fires acoustic. And then the second part is setting fires more upbeat vibe. Nice. Um, and um, we want, our vision is to release that in Calgary, our hometown. Nice. And we're born and raised here and this is our hometown. So, that, so that's what we did. So we did um, a lot of different work um, and marketing and things like that between the two. But mainly we want to really inspire, when want our listeners to when they listen to part one and part two of setting fires, we really want them to feel the encouragement and the confidence to support them in their journey of breaking out of the comfort zone and so then they can continue to take a leap, God, take a leap, take a, leap. Make a change, set fires to your set fires. So that's <laughs> awesome. Yeah, you know, it's so easy to get comfortable and it's, it's so hard to set a fire when you're just nice and comfortable, right? It's like, man, fire, that's, that's going to mess up my nice <laughs> little status quo existence here, right? So uh, if somebody wanted to follow you, I mean, I, I, we're going to list all of your social, uh, uh, you know, and your website and all of that. But what would be, you know, the one or two places that you really like, hey, you have to go here? Yeah. So for um, our social media, our Instagram yep. and Facebook would be uh, like kind of the, the areas where we mainly hang out. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah, and then also, of course, our um, our music uh, platforms like Spotify, Apple Music. And then if you want a high quality of our downloads of our music would be our Bandcamp store. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Awesome. And so Instagram is uh, I, uh, dot con twins official. Yeah. Yes. Right. So that's I dot con twins official. And uh, please do check them out there because you guys actually do some performances there a little bit and tons of inspirational content. It's actually just fun watching you guys do <laughs> what you. you do and the energy you bring to it. And then Facebook is the same, right? So Facebook icon twins yeah. and, uh, and then definitely, uh, check out like, you know, I'm a big fan. Uh, we've tried in our work, you know, through flourishing workplace as much as we can to support these ladies and, and at least cheer them on because supporting local is so important, but more than just supporting local, it's, I really believe in the message. I think you know, and the work that I do with young women or young men, where people are struggling to find their identity, they're trying to figure out their mental health, they just try to get on track with life and career. It's so awesome to have other young people who have an inspirational story. And I know that's your passion and that's your heart to help people, not to judge them or to push them, but actually to help give them the confidence to inspire and to discover themselves. And so these are really uh, you know, sort of high value conscious uh, ladies who genuinely care. So please do check them out. Again, that's Icon Twins. Um, so final message for anyone, maybe from each of you, how does that sound for, 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 for the audience here today? Just a final message from the heart, anything you'd like to say or share? Uh, I want to say, um, echoing my, our new single, The Hero Inside, yeah. is that we hope that I'll give you strength and encouragement and that whatever you're feeling no matter how helpless you feel you always have a hero inside of you to exactly. keep going keep believing and to keep fighting for you yeah. yep and then i would say don't be afraid to make a change and get out of your comfort zone it's never too late and continue to be fulfilled and happy and live the authentic life that's so cool that's so cool so can i just ask one question if i was going to find that hero inside is that is that what you think it's about is that courage that authenticity getting out of the comfort zone. Is that what you kind of, that's the, 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 the path. So I'm for the hero. Inside. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So uh, the song, I rewrote the song, um, during a time when we felt very helpless. Okay. Lost. Mm. So we, when we write songs, it's a bare person also. It's usually I want to kind of give myself um, the encouragement and the strength. Mm-hmm. And so a message for ourselves, but when we release it, we want to give that message to our listeners as well. And hopefully they'll give them strength to yeah. keep believing and to have confidence in themselves to keep being, their authentic self and to release the hero inside. <laughs> Love that. Okay. So, hey, uh, folks, uh, thanks so much for tuning in. I mean, hey, this is called the Flourishing Podcast. This is flourishing. Uh, not just the highs, but the lows, right? Not just the wins, but also some struggles. But that's what these ladies have been doing. They've been flourishing. And so, again, please check them out. Their official website is icontwinsofficial.com. That's icontwinsofficial.com. And I'm sure there, 
that can also connect people to all of the other social media channels and Bandcamp and places like that. So please, let's support them. But more importantly, let's check them out because I think they have a message that will help. And thank you, ladies, both for being here today. Okay, thank you so much. Take care, everybody. We'll see you in our next episode.